Hi there, in this video, I'm gonna talk you through the editing process of one of my photographs. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through all the steps of how I edit a photograph from start to finish. So I hope you'll find that useful. Also, I wanna mention an upcoming video where I'm gonna do a question and answer session. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me, leave them down below in the comments. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna announce the winner of the t-shirt competition from a few videos ago. So hopefully this video will really help you to enjoy your photography. So we've come inside onto the computer and what I've done is I've put two versions of the same photograph on the screen now. Now the one on the left is the raw file that came straight out of the computer so it's had no alterations done to it at all and you can see that it's very flat, it's got no punch, um, the colours are not very vibrant, um, we've got some sky up in the top right hand corner that I need to sort out. So overall it's got a lot of potential but it needs some work on it to pull out its best features. Now on the right is the altered image. Now I've done several things to this that we're gonna talk through in this video. Um, I've put it through Camera Raw um, and done some alterations there. I've put it into Luminar, um, I've done some alterations there. And finally, I did a little bit of dodging and burning just to bring out some extra details. So we're going to go through all of those now. <laughs> I've loaded the image into Camera Raw. Now Camera Raw is a converter that comes with Photoshop. If you use Lightroom, they've got the exact same controls in Lightroom that you can use to convert raw images. And there are other raw converters um, on the market as well that you could use. But if you don't already take photographs in raw, it's really worth thinking about starting because basically what you get is a digital negative um, but it records so much more data than a JPEG because a JPEG when you take a photograph um, basically the camera strips out some of the information from that file. Now the first thing that I'm going to do to this image is I'm going to get rid of that little bit of sky at the top right hand corner because anytime you have bright highlights in a image especially if it's sky like that your eye gets drawn towards it and we don't want to draw our eye away from the main point of the image we want our eye to go towards the waterfall. Now it's a simple case of just cropping it out so I'm going to go up to the crop tool and I'm literally going to bring down the top just so we lose that bit of sky and then I'm going to apply that crop and already you can see that without that bright highlight in the top our eye is not drawn towards it. The first thing that we're going to do is work through the basic tab just to improve the colours and the contrast just to make this image pop a little bit more. So to start with I'm going to improve the um, white balance. Now there's a temperature slider at the top and you can see at the moment that uh, the colours are not particularly popping but if I slide this up um, to maybe about just over 8,000, the colours seem a lot more orange and that's really what I want because it warms up the whole image. What I will do is I'll just slide down the shadows a little bit just to give a little bit more contrast. Now I am aware that this area just here around the waterfall is a little bit dark but we're going to sort that out shortly. Now the two sliders that really make a difference are the vibrance and the saturation. So what I want to do is I really want to make those leaves really stand out and really bring out the autumn colours. So I'm going to bring again the sliders and the vibrance up to around about 20. It's not absolutely vital that you get it exactly 20 and I'm going to do the same with the saturation. Now be careful not to go too far because if I take it up to 100 it can be just way too powerful and look completely unnatural. So I've just put it at about 20 but you can see that this is already a big improvement just by using the basic tab. 
Now the new version of Camera Raw and the equivalent in Lightroom has really had its masking functions enhanced. There's, it's really, really clever how it's been changed. I'm not gonna go through all of that in this video, but when you select the mask tool, you get lots more options here about the type of um, mask that you can create. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a um, brush mask because I only want it to apply to a certain area. So I'm gonna paint uh, the mask into this area by the side of the weir and you can see where the mask is going to be applied because there's a, a red color comes onto the the image so when you're happy with the area where the mask is going to be applied you can then just lift the exposure and I'm also going to lift the shadows now I might be pushing this a little bit too far but it's not a problem in this particular image because this area here is the focal point of the image um, and so I want to draw the viewer's attention to this area so because it's a little bit brighter perhaps than it should be is not a big problem if I zoom out now on that image you can see that that area there now is not as dark as it was it's got a lot more detail that was you couldn't see before and we're going to get the viewer's eye drawn to that area I have talked about Luminar before in a video. Now I'm not sponsored by Luminar. I have bought it with my own money. Um, so I don't get anything if you choose to go and buy it, but it is a really useful um, filter. So if I go to the edit tab, first of all, um, nearly every image that I take, I add a little bit of accent. It's accent AI. It's got um, an artificial intelligence. And as you lift this, it just seems to improve the contrast and the colors. It just brings loads of detail out in your image. Now I normally take it up to about 30. I just find that um, really helps, but nearly every image that I take has a little bit of accent added to it. The final thing that I need to do is just go to the, the landscape tab and what I'm going to do, and it, you wouldn't do this normally, is I'm just going to lift up the golden hour part of the slider because that again really makes those colors pop. Now you can see that when I do that, a lot of the image is affected. In fact, the overall image is affected, but I only really want the leaves because these trees here are going a strange color as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a mask and I'm just gonna paint the area that I actually want this to be applied to. So I'm just gonna apply this to the leaves and this will stop um, those tree trunks going a really strange color maybe some of these leaves in this gap. And the same thing with the foliage enhancer. I'm just gonna lift that a little bit because what that does is the greens, let's make sure I've got the greens highlighted, it just lifts some of these greens to make those um, stand out just a little bit more as well. One thing that I do to most images is add a vignette. Now, Luminar does a really good job at adding a vignette without it being particularly noticeable. Um, what the idea is, is to try and darken the corners to push the viewer's eye towards the center. Now, you can take it way too far like that. Now, in this instance, the corners are very, very dark and there's an obvious circle. Now, that's not what you want to try and do. That is much, much too obvious. So we go back to nothing and slowly start to apply the vignette. You can see that the corners slowly start to dark, darken and here we've got darker corners but there's no obvious circle. So the viewer's eye has been pushed towards the center but we can't actually discern why and that's what we're looking for from a vignette. So the final tab that we're going to look at is the creative tab. Now there's lots of things that you can do in this. With this particular image, there's not many things that I need to actually change. So the only things I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna make the mystical slider a little bit higher. Now again, this is something that you can go too far with. Um, some people might like that kind of um, 
effect, but I don't think it's very natural. So I'm just going to wind that back. But what it is doing is it's just making the yellow highlights just pop a little bit more. I'm going to leave it at around about the, the high 30s because these areas of yellow leaves around here and the footpath just gets lifted. And that's what I really want. Um, and I'm also going to add a little bit of glow. Um, not a lot. It's very subtle. But again, looking at those areas of leaves, if you see what happens if you wind it all the way up to the top, you can see the areas that are really affected and those yellow areas really jump out when you take it up to 100%. So if I wind that back to only about 10, 12, those, um, if I turn that off, and turn it back on again you can see those yellow areas of leaves just pop a little bit more and it just adds a little bit more depth and um, layers to the image so the final thing that i'm going to do uh, in this image is some dodging and burning now if i was to use the dodge and burn tool from the toolbar on the left hand side it can be destructive now what that means is it changes your original image and now you should avoid doing that at all costs try and do things that you can revert back to the way that they were so your original image is not um, um, changed at all what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer that I can do my changes on and so I can turn that layer on and off or completely delete it if I'm not happy with the changes that I've made. So what I'm going to do is if you hold down the Alt key and click the new layer um, button which is down in the bottom which is a little um, the bottom of the layers palette which is a little plus sign you'll get this window up here and you can select the mode if I select overlay from the mode and I fill that with an 50% uh, gray then what will happen because of the overlay mode you can't see it at all because that 50% gray just becomes completely transparent but I can now paint onto that with black or white and that will have the same effect as the dodge and burn tool select white as your foreground color and an opacity of about 10 percent because I don't want this um, effect to be really strong I'll just show you what happens if I do paint with white at 100 percent you can see that the brightness is far too much it, it, the effect is just too strong so if i make the uh, um the opacity down to 10 percent now i did that very quickly by just using the number keys to select 100 percent i select use zero and to select 10 percent i use the number one it's just a very quick way of selecting um, different opacities but i'm going to now paint onto certain areas and I really want to focus on the area around the waterfall. I want to brighten that area up because I want the again the viewer's eye to be drawn to that particular spot and I'm just going to just subtly um, paint over the top of this bank here just to make that stand out and if I just turn that on and off again you can see that that area there has just been enhanced ever so slightly. Now you could do that over the entire image if you wanted. If I'd got more time, I might be um, spending a little bit of time doing that. Now, overall, because I've been talking and working at the same time, um, I might not have edited this exactly how I would um, if I was doing it for real, because I would take more time over it. And it's a good idea, once you've done some edits, to then leave it go away have a break because when you're making edits on top of another edit you start to become a little bit blind to how the overall image looks you might have gone a little bit too far with the saturation or something might not be quite right so it's a good idea to just have a break come back to it again and just see whether everything that you've done really makes it better or whether you've gone a little bit too far and it makes it worse
I hope you found that video useful. It was a little bit longer than usual, but I did cut out 10 minutes worth of footage just to save the waffling that I did in the original. So I hope it was still clear. Don't forget about my question and answer video that's coming up shortly. Send me your comments down below and I'll try and answer those. Now on to the winner of the t-shirt. That goes to Riley Cantley Thompson. Riley, if you just get in touch with me, I'll get that t-shirt off to you very soon. If you've got any questions about that video, do leave them down below or nip over to my Instagram account, that's at The Oakton Photography. You can leave me your comments there and you can also see lots of my pictures. If you like what I do on the channel, you can help support me by visiting my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer and I've got lots of new designs, so go and check those out. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications because that really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any of my future content. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live at four o'clock on Sunday. Go and check out this video just up here. All that's left now though is to say stay safe and I'll see you soon. It's bloody raining.